Welcome. In this video, we are going to take a look at writing exponential functions. So we're going to start taking this into a kind of a physical example, looking at the pieces and what's accumulating as we go. Um, so in this first example, we start at day zero at the very beginning with one starfish. Um, so whatever we're starting off with here at zero, the time zero, very beginning, we're going to think about as this is right here, 100% of what we're starting with. So in this case, that 100% is one starfish. So if we look at one increment further, I now have that 100% plus another one of that 100%. So if we're thinking about where we are going, um, we start with that 100% and we're adding another 100%. So that's going to help us come up with our function here, that whatever our day zero amount is, that's our starting amount. So I'm starting with that one. And then we're going to multiply that by um, the 100% we start with plus another 100%. So we're writing those 100% as decimals. So 100% is one whole of something. Okay. So we have that 100% plus another 100%. So if we go to the next Day, we're taking all of what we had the day before. So in this case, now we're at two stars, two starfish. That's 100% of what we had the day before with another 100% of what we had the day before. So we're taking that 100% plus an additional 100% of whatever we had previously. So this thing that we have there is that what we're going to take to our exponent. So we're going to end up with this function y equals 1, what we started with, times the 100% plus another 100% to the x. So then day 3, I'm going to take my 100% from day 2, which in this case is 4 starfish, and I'm going to have an additional 100%. So we're going to have eight starfish. So we're starting with that 100% from the previous day. We're adding on an additional 100%. And that's going to end up being our base of our exponential there. So let's try another one here. So here we're still starting with one. So that one starfish is right here. We're starting with that one starfish. So here's my 100%. So I'm going to look at the next one. We have 100%, 100%, 100%. Okay. So that means I have my 100% I started with, and I'm getting an additional 200% for my one I started with, 100% plus 200%, which gives me this 3 to the x. So how would we continue on our table here? Well, now I have my 100% from day one, so that's three stars, plus an additional two of those three stars. Day three, that one would have this as my 100%. So nine stars. I'm just going to put nine stars. And then an additional two, nine stars, nine stars. So I'd end up with nine, 18, 27 stars on day three. Okay, let's try another one here. We're giving you less information on this one. So this two here comes from, give me a letter here. This two means we're starting with two, okay? And then that two is our 100%. So here is my two, that's my 100%. And then we're adding on, uh-oh, I'm only adding on one. How does that relate to two? Well, it's half of two, so this is 50%. So my value here is going to be that 100% plus 50% or 0.5. So if we take that 100% plus 0.5, we're going to end up with 1.5 to the x. Okay, so we could continue on our table. So now this next one here is three stars. That's my 100%. And then half of that, more. So a star and, let me draw half a star. Half a star, <laughs> one and a half stars is our um, 50%. So we'd have four and a half stars for day two. Okay, less information on this next one. 
Okay, so we start off here. Oh, this one's a little different because we start off with a bunch of stars. We end up with fewer. So this is my 100%. I'm starting with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stars. So that's what we're starting with here. And then we have to figure out how do we go there? Okay, so I actually took some off instead of adding some. So if we look at this chunk here that we're left with, well, that's four out of my eight stars. So this is 50%, half of it. And this is 50%. So we're really taking our 100%. And instead of adding an additional 100%, I'm actually taking away 50%. So if I take one minus 0.5, I get 0.5 or one half. So if we take half of eight, we get four. So now we're gonna take half of this for my next day. If I went to day three, I'd take half of that, right? So we're taking our 100% and taking away 50% to get smaller. Okay, day five is, our example five looks very similar to this. Okay, so here's our 100% here. So if this is 100%, I wanna see how does this chunk relate to that? So that's three stars. So if I split that up into three pieces, this is one third, one third, one third. So I actually have my one minus two thirds, right? I'm only left with a third of that, which is one third left over. We could write that as percents a little harder with thirds since they're repeating decimals. Let's keep a nice number there. So then if we wanted to continue that on, um, we're just taking a third of this. So I'd have one star left on day two. Um, what did we start off with here? Three, six, nine. So that's our starting value there, our A value um, in our equation. Okay, let's look at one more starfish example and then we'll move on to some graphs here. So day zero, we're starting with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine stars. So this is my 100%. And then we're getting rid of three stars. So I have three stars here is a third. So I have my 100% minus a third. So three thirds minus one third is two thirds. So we have two thirds of that nine left over after day one. So if we wanted to continue that up, I'm gonna split this one into thirds and we're taking two of those thirds left over. So I'd have four stars after day two. We're taking off that third of what we had left. So this is a good visual representation of what we have there. And as we're starting to write our equations, we're still gonna start about, think about what is that starting amount and how can we incorporate then what we're doing with that starting amount from there. So let's turn this over to some graphs here. Um, so if we're looking at our graphs, we're still thinking about those same things, um, but that A value is the y-intercept, right? Because that's our day zero, right? When x equals zero, we're at our y-intercept. And then we're finding a constant ratio by using a table of values. Um, so we're gonna see what's happening to our values as we change um, from there. So if um, we're writing an equation, we're gonna have fx equals a times b to the x, right? You could put a y here as well, that's just function notation. Um, so if I want to write an equation for this here, I'm gonna start with looking at what is my y-intercept? What is the value when um, x equals zero? And so we have that a value is nine, right? We're starting at nine. Um, that's our starting amount there. So let's look at a table of values. I know when x is zero, y is nine. And we have this other point here. I know when x is one, y is three. Um, that's our value here. Okay, so if we wanna think about this like our starfish, I'm starting with nine starfish, and now I have three left. Um, so I'm at 100%, I took off six, um, six is two thirds, so I'm left with a third of what I started with. Um, so we can look at it that way, or we can think nine times what is a third is 
three, sorry. So nine times a third, and that constant ratio will also give us our B value. So then our function here is y equals nine times one third to the x. Okay, if you're not sure about that third, you can also divide backwards three divided by nine, right? You're just trying to think nine times what is three. So if you have three divided by nine, um, you can work your way backwards there as well. Okay, let's look at another example here with a graph. So again, we're really interested in our y-intercept and then some other clear points from there. And um, this one's a little harder here than to see. That's at two. So I know when x is zero, y is y is two. So this right here is our a value. So we already know our starting value. And then we need at least one other point. Um, nice if we have a consecutive point here. Um, so we're going down to when x is one, y is one. Okay, so you're thinking I'm starting with two, I'm going down to one. So that B value should be less than one. Um, we're taking our 100% and going down to half of that. So our multiplication, our common ratio here is one half. So our function here is f of x equals two times one half to the x. Okay, let's try a couple more because these are challenging. Let's look at some from equation, or sorry, from some points. So if I want to write equation for an exponential function that passes through given points, um, if you have a zero for your x, you automatically have your a value. So there's zero, two, zero, three. Okay, right? those two give us our um our a value in the y that's our starting value if you're not given that we're just gonna have to do a little work to get back to zero but we can do that in our table okay so here you're going from zero two to one twelve you want to make sure here with your x's that we're always just going up by one so if they don't give you up by one make sure you leave some spaces so that we can fill in those um, up by one in the x direction because as we change by one in the x direction that's where we can find our constant ratio in the y direction so as i go up by one here what can i multiply two by to get 12 and two times six is 12 um, if you wanted to look at that in our starfish right i have two i end up with 12 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, right? Here's my 2, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 more 2s. So I have that 100% plus 500 more percent. That will give me that 6. Okay, so then we're just plugging in those things into our equation. Y equals 2 times 6 to the x. Okay, this next one here is a little different because they don't give us our zero. So we always wanna find our zero. So put in a zero for x. They gave us at x is one, y is one, x is two, y is four. So I can still find my um, common ratio here because we're going up by one. So what do I have to multiply one by to make it four? I have to multiply it by four. One times four is four. So then to get back, this direction, I need to do the opposite, which would be divide by four. So one divided by four is one fourth. So our A value is one fourth, and our B value is four. Okay, nice one here. They gave us our A value, but tricky, they didn't give us one. So when you're making your table, make sure you go zero, one, two in your x direction, and then y we know is three, hmm, I don't know, and 48. So this one we have to do a little bit more figuring out um, with how to get there. So here, I have multiplied by something twice. That's my common ratio, and when I multiply by that twice, I get this other value. So if I want to know 3 times what is 48, I can mark my way backwards and do 48 divided by 3. Um, so if you do 48 divided by 3, 
you're going to get 16. So really, we've multiplied by the same thing, that constant ratio twice, to multiply by 16 once. So we're thinking what times itself equals 16. So if you multiply by 4, multiply by 4, right? because 4 times 4 is 16, um, that is your common ratio there. So 3 times 4, if you're going to check your work here, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48, which will get you to where you want to go. So if you're not sure um, if this, if you've worked your way backwards there correctly, just try it to fill in your points to see if it works. So our starting value is 3, A value. And then our constant ratio is 4, so our base is 4 to the X. Okay, just a couple more of these here. We have... Oh, this one they don't, oh, they threw it both together here for us. So we don't have zero. We know one is 14. They don't give us two, and we know three is 56. So again, we're missing this value here. So really, I've multiplied by this thing twice to multiply by 56 divided by 14, four. So we're thinking, what can I multiply by twice that would be the same as multiplying by 4? Well, 2 times 2 is 4, so 14 times 2 is 28. 28 times 2 is 56. That works out well. So then to go backwards, we need to divide. 14 divided by 2 is 7. If you're not sure, check your work. 7 times 2 is 14, 14 times 2 is 28, 28 times 2 is 56. So we should have that same multiplication as our x has increased by 1. So now we have that a value is 7, and our b value here is 2. So we can write our function f of x equals 7 times 2 to the x. Ooh, threw some fractions in on us. We can do this. Okay, we don't have zero, so we're going to need to put that in our table. They do tell us that one is a half and two is a fourth, so at least we're not skipping here, but we have to know a little bit of fractions. One half times what is one fourth? Well, one times one is one, two times two is four, so we're multiplying by a half here each time. So a half divided by a half, um, hopefully we can think something divided by itself is one. Um, but if that's hard for you, you can always go in your calculator, just make sure you use your parentheses to say one half divided by one half, and you should get that same one. Okay, uh, so we have our A value by working your way backwards there. We have our B value, that's our constant ratio here. So we can say y equals a value times b value to the x. Okay, very last one that we're going to do together here. So, ooh, they gave us negative 3. Goes with 16. We don't have negative 2. We have negative 1. Goes with 4. And we don't have 0. So we're going to have to look here. Say 16 times what is 4. That's hard. So if you do 4 divided by 16, um, that gives us 0.25. That's a quarter. If you don't know that, use the second PRB to change that to a fraction. Okay, so this is a fourth. Oh, I didn't write that out because I want these here. One fourth. So I'm really thinking what times itself is a fourth? Hey, lucky us, we just did that. It's a half times a half. So each time here, we should be taking a half. Let's check and make sure if it works. Right, that's our... Okay, half of 16 is 8. Half of 8 is 4. Half of 4 is 2. Okay, so now we have our A value right here, because we got to 0. And our B value is a half. So f of x equals 2 times one half to the x. So either way, we're just working to find those two things to put into our function there. That is all I have for you today. Thanks so much for watching.